How to do a geisha painting in water-soluble markers by Hajar Meeks. So I had this lovely little blotting paper that has a little geisha on it, and even though it was very small and very blurry, I always found it very sort of enticing. So I flipped it over and did my own drawing of it um, because I wanted to get a closer look at the composition. And then I decided it would be a good idea to do my own really sort of original drawing of it. And you can see the hairstyle is very inspired by Memoirs of a Geisha. So for the tools I ended up using for this project, I had of course a pencil and eraser, and also some calligraphy markers, some that were water soluble and some that were not. So the Zig Rider is a double-headed marker that is not water soluble, whereas the Itoya double-headed calligraphy markers are water soluble. I also have some pencil water brushes. I also ended up using a triple zero spotter brush and you'll see me get that right now and that's because that fine tip of that zig marker was still not fine enough to do the little details on the geisha's face so the reason i'm doing that is so i don't ruin the really sensitive little lines that i ended up putting in for her face and for her skin so the reason I'm doing this is because the zig marker is not water soluble, which means it's permanent. So when I go to add water later to this painting, this marker is not going to smear or anything. And I don't know about anybody else who's used uh, a paintbrush straight to dip onto a marker, but it works really well if you're using a really small brush. So you can see that even though it looks like I'm dipping into ink, I'm actually just touching the tip of the brush onto the marker and then coming back to the paper. And it works really well to paint these really fine lines because the tip of that marker, even though it's double-headed and the other side is finer, just isn't working for that. Now be really careful about not ruining your pencil lines when you're doing this because it's really important that you try to preserve as much of the gentleness of the pencil as, as possible even though the ink is inevitably going to be harsher. So I'm just doing her hands and her face, which is basically just her skin, in this permanent marker. After this, I'm actually going to switch to the Itoya markers for the rest of the painting because I really want this ink to run. So now for her fan, I've switched to a Mocha Itoya marker and I have a limited color scheme, no surprise, for the rest of this painting. So I have black and I have aquamarine, I have mocha and cabernet. Those are the only colors. So there's really just a, a blue and a reddish brown sort of color scheme to the whole thing. So you'll see what happens here. And this is the cabernet marker that I'm using for the flowers that are um, pinned to her head there. And I'm using it also for the ribbon around her head. And this is really easy going, so if you're nervous about painting, this is a really good project to start with because I think it's still relatively simple because her face is a little bit hard and her hands are a little bit hard, but if you can get past that part and use my drawing as a tracing reference even if you'd like to, then what ends up happening is the rest of her costume and the rest of the painting is really loose and flowing and it has no form because it's really taking the model off of the original drawing and the original um, blotting paper reference which is really loose and really art nouveau. So I think she's leaning against some kind of cushion or a divan or a chaise or something and I'm really not sure. I just copied it straight out of what I thought was happening in the little reference but I'm sort of making it up and I'm using these broad strokes from the other side of the black marker to do that and the cabernet to decorate the cushion and just try to keep a good contrast going so I know that her robes are all going to be in the black and everywhere else I have to sort of decide where do I use that red brown and where do I use the blue and so I'm going to do some of the butterflies in blue and some of them in that cabernet red and I'm going to pretty much not use any more brown the only places where I had a little bit of brown were in the fan and in the little comb um, dangly thingy in her hair so I'm going to do these little butterflies, and they're all very abstract, so I could do them much more realistic if I wanted to. I probably would if this was a watercolor painting, but it's a lot of fun to just sort of be looser when you're doing, you know, ink. And so I'm also using now the blue to put in the background and a lot of lines. And once I'm done with this, you can sort of say, well, this is a nice ink drawing, and I can sort of stop here. But I think what makes this more exciting than just being an ink drawing is the fact that I've been using markers that are water soluble. So this is a simpler project. You can do this for more complicated drawings like I've done in the past. But even for this project, you can see just how much flair it's going to add once I start adding water to this drawing. 
So I'm almost done here. I'm trying to put in these last butterflies. I'm trying to get a good balance and you have to be careful because sometimes you can have too much of a good thing and then you end up having poor balance when it comes in your comp you know when it comes to the colors in your composition. But as long as you're, you know, having fun and you just sort of use your intuition, you can do that. So here's the water and you can automatically see that I'm just sort of adding the water with the brush. That brush has no ink in it. It's just filled with water. It's a little nylon brush. And like I said, it's kind of too crappy to use for, you know, a painting where you're doing stuff in more detail. But for this loose washy stuff, it does work. And I'm going to keep doing that in different spaces. And you'll notice that I added a lot more water to the background and less to the butterflies. I'm also picking up little pieces of reddish brown and I'm adding it to her face. So this sort of cold um, skin porcelain color that you see evolving on her face is just me picking up smudges of that Cabernet marker off of other parts of the painting and coloring her face with it. And again that's exciting because you can sort of use your drawing as your palette and also use it to shade certain areas. So I'm doing that with the kimono now where I'm using the black outlines and pushing the ink line in the directions I want them to go because I know they're going to bleed when I add the water to them. And so this is all water. There is no ink being added, no paint being added and just add the water and it'll make the ink run. I have a washcloth on the side so if I want to clean that tip of the brush off you can clean it in between the red and the blue so you don't end up with a muddier color but it's sort of self-cleaning because there really isn't that much and if you move from color to color so if you do all of one color and then another color before cleaning then it should work okay. And again you can see how much I've made the background and also that little couch or cushion that she's leaning on bleed quite a lot. It's a lot of fun because you want to get those blooms, you want to get that really watery runny effect because I think it elevates a normal ink painting into the realm of something a lot more interesting. So you can just keep touching it up a bit. I've added my signature and I'm now adding more to the background because I feel like it's still off in the balance but can have fun and you can see how I've taken um, this inspiration that I got off of a little card and did my own drawing with it and made it a little bit more realistic but still sort of very loose and flowing and then I painted over it with markers that would be water soluble when I added water later and you get this wonderful beautiful sort of effect 